and on the telephone now, or rather in the, at the Standard Bank um, offices, is Jacka Marie, who is the CEO of uh, Standard Bank. Uh, the numbers coming out uh, this morning, headline earnings uh, up 11%. These are the first half, no first half numbers for uh, Standard Bank. A dividend was declared of 212 cents, and Jacka Marie is, uh, is with us now. Uh, Jacko, over the years, I've always teased you about how cautious you are with your statements, but this time there seems to be some justification of, for the caution. Before we get into the semantics of the number, have you seen a deterioration in conditions in the second part of these numbers, in other words, the, the, the second quarter? Very definitely. Uh, you know, we, we, we saw an improvement, you know, a reasonable first quarter, and the second quarter for us was, was tough, particularly in the corporate and investment banking business. Now, for those people who follow uh, what's going on with the big investment banks around the world, this is not uh, a surprise. All the big investment banks uh, were down, which means the trading activities were down, customer activity on big cross-border deals um, was down. And uh, so, yeah, so it was, it was a difficult environment for our corporate and investment banking business, which is the big ticket uh, business. Our, our personal uh, and business banking uh, activities were not affected. So, so we saw that signal, but it was very much restricted to the corporate and investment banking business. Yes, indeed. I mean, the last uh, se uh, segment of your business, you just spoke about personal and business banking headline earnings up well over 30 percent, which is good. Something that may be worrying the market a bit because your share price did get hit right from the opening today after these results were brought out was that uh, it says here a greater proportion of higher margin unsecured loans. I think they've gone, if I'm reading this right, from uh, last year's figure of 716 million up to something like 3.4 billion. And certain people in certain areas of the market, certain commentators, are sort of flagging this as a, maybe a, a, a potential headwind in the future. Do you share that concern? I, I, I do think that the issue of unsecured lending does deserve lots of discussion um, and attention. Uh, clearly, there, there are a lot of forces at play here, and despite the very high growth rate, uh, 3.5 billion of total uh, exposure of personal term loans uh, at call it the low end of the market is a very small number in the totality of standard banks still 85 percent of these customers that we have on our books um, actually banked with standard bank before so we've had visibility of their transactional banking accounts and so forth but you are right that i think the you know the, the industry is under a microscope um, you have monoline players you have the big banks call it reclaiming their rightful share of this business. Um, and so, there, so it is competitive and there are worries about it possibly creating a bubble. But I'd be surprised if that was uh, what was weighing perhaps on the Standard Bank share price. I think it's probably a more general sense that um, you know, the outlook for, for banking, particularly a bank like ours with lots of cross-border activities, is going to be quite tough in the second half. Yeah, indeed. Also, they may say because they're greedy and you, because the banking index has gone from 40,000 up to 50,000 and your share price has been a big part of that, that maybe an 11% increase in headline earnings, you know, not quite as glamorous as they wanted it to be. Maybe they're also, Jacko, having a look at the credit loss ratio going from 0.812 to, to 0.98. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, just to pick up on your earlier point, I, I think the market was expecting our earnings to be up about 15% and we came in at 11, so uh, understandably some, some disappointment there. Uh, on the credit loss ratio, um, we have often said that we think through the cycle our bad debt charge would be around the 1% mark. Now, this time round it was just below 1%, but it was up. It wasn't so much the personal and business banking side. We had a few large-ish uh, Call it corporate uh, bad debts, um, not you know not not outside the the, the range of, of 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 normal probabilities, but you know with corporate bad debts they kind of they they come in lumps and they come uh, when you least expect them sometimes. So uh, it's just uh, part of the hazard of of, of being a, a corporate banker that you do pick up these problems from time to time, and we tend to to provide for them um, as and when we see them. Are you saying then that this was sort of 1% area that we're looking at at the moment, 0.98% to be precise, is, is well contained and the jump from 0.81 to 0.98 is because of a couple of once-offs that will not be repeated? That is correct, but, but I think what you are now also going to see if you 
project forward, I think we've seen the bottom of, call it the personal and business banking bad debts. I think you are now going to see that increasing slightly, particularly as we go into areas like unsecured lending, where the, where the margins are higher, but the credit losses are higher um, as well. So you, the personal and business banking side of our bank, and I think many others, will not have the tailwind that they've had for the last couple of years of bad debts coming down. I think you'll see a more normalized uh, trend. So uh, what I was really trying to indicate is that you know, for a bank like ours, a, a charge of about 1%, would, however, it's whatever the components, would not be particularly uh, unusual. There have been times when we've been quite a bit higher than that. Understood. Okay, expenses up, operating expenses up 17%, staff costs up 16%. But when you talk about your operating expenses rising 17%, which in many people's eyes is quite high, you really do highlight that this is because of your expansion into the rest of Africa. And again, we talk to so many companies that are expanding into the, into the rest of Africa, having ignored it in the past. You haven't in the past, but how exciting is it uh, north of our border? Yes, on the expense point, we had two factors, really. The one was we have quite a lot of, of expenses denominated in dollars, and so therefore the weaker rand hurt us by about 4% in that 17% figure. And then about 5% of the growth was linked into what you refer to, which is the, um, the, 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 the expend across Africa. We, we've been going at this for a long time, um, and we did show some results today uh, of what the on-the-ground operations in Africa are doing. Our, our profits in the banks outside of South Africa on the continent were up more than 80%. Our loans were up by more than 40%, I think, and our deposits were also up in that, in that range. So uh, very high growth rates coming out of our African franchises, and a lot of that is because of the investment we've made in the past. But we continue to invest. For example, at the moment, we are uh, building branches uh, in a greenfields operation in Angola. And that's an expensive, uh, it's, it's an expensive activity, but we think well worth it in the long term. So it's this continual challenge of, of harvesting what you've sowed in the past, but also planting um, for the future. Mm. Talking about the rest of Africa and the, and the future and the Chinese connection, you have a very strong Chinese connection, uh, of course. How, is your, how are your shareholders? Are they happy with you? Yes, well, we had, uh, we had our two board members from ICBC were out uh, for the last few days with the results uh, and the board meetings around that. So we had extensive discussions um, with them. I, I go to, to, to Beijing quite frequently and, uh, and, and so on. So very, very, very strong links. I think going uh, well, I, I think you know, the Chinese uh, People in general, and ICBC in particular, do take a long-term view. This is They didn't make the investment because of what they would see today or tomorrow or next year. This is a, a long-term strategic view of the African continent and of Standard Bank uh, in, in, in their case. So it's going really well. Uh, we had, you know, we've got lots of deals that we can refer to. But what's more interesting is that our transactional uh, and business banking, the very basic kind of bread and butter banking, is increasing uh, rapidly across the continent. And a lot of that is to do with the Chinese link.